Joining us now to discuss how her church is handling next steps, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. She's the presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Bishop, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Yes, good morning. So, so you've heard the arguments here. They're, they're legal, they're political, a uh, little emotional at times, mm -hmm. saying this is a freedom issue. People have the right to go back to church regardless uh, of the health risks uh, of worshiping together. What's your response to that? Well, first of all, um, let me say the church has never been closed. Uh, we've found different ways to gather digitally mostly, uh, but we're also continuing all of our work of prayer, Bible study, and also serving the neighbor. And this is not the first time the Lutheran movement has been through this. In 1527, um, there was a plague going on in Wittenberg where Martin Luther was, and he recommended to people to practice social distancing, they didn't know what it was at the time, uh, to pay attention to science and medicine, not to uh, risk somebody else in case you're infected, and he was pretty drastic about that, um, and, but to keep the essential services of the church going. And we have done all of those things. So um, I don't see this uh, as somehow faith versus freedom, um, but that um, being careful is a way for us to be faithful. Yeah, I, I was I was struck reading some of your comments, and, and one of them is this. You said, I've heard from some in our own denomination that it's faith versus fear, and that's just a false mm -hmm. dichotomy. You say protecting others is the faithful response. What is the data point for you that says we can congregate and we should and we should bring X amount of people together? Well, as you, as you mentioned, we're um, all over the United States and the Caribbean, and states and territories and uh, tribal governments are opening at different times. So we're gonna be re relying on the CDC, on science, since science is a gift from God, and also on state and local officials. Um, and when they determine that more than 10 people can gather safely, uh, then I think we'll, we have already protocols in place to help our congregations open safely. Tell us how you handle the particular risks uh, of worshiping together. I mean, singing, I mean, th this is about data, uh, that singing in particular propels uh, yeah. droplets from the infected into the air into a large number of people, and there's been some data that that's led to some outbreaks. So, so, so what are the safe ways uh, that you can get together? Well, as we phase in on this, we're going to have to see. Um, singing is hugely important in our tradition, um, so that's painful not to be able to sing together, but we'll probably be wearing face coverings when we're together, social distancing in the congregation, um, not singing um, and refraining from the sacrament as we find our way through this and find ways where we can gather together, but safely. It's, this is not, there's no one, no one's immune to this yet. I want you to listen to something uh, that, that California pastor Jim Franklin said on our show just last week to Jim. Here he was making his case. Of course, this will not be church, quote unquote, as usual as we had it before all of this hit. There'll be social distancing, sanitation, uh, mask, uh, no congregating, all of those things that are the CDC guidelines that are being held in every other place. We're just saying, well, let's let us do that same thing at church. Don't put us in a separate category. His point is he feels like churches have been held to a different standard when other places can be open. You know, the president mentioned over the weekend liquor stores, for example. What do you make of that argument? Well, I think that's a false equivalency, um, and I regret that statement by the president. But um, I, I've heard this argument as well. People can go to the grocery store. Well, grocery stores are usually a lot larger than our congregations. You're not sitting by someone for over an hour um, with, with a potential for infection. Now, I'm glad to see that the pastor is following um, all the, the, uh, the legal and constitutional uh, remedies he can for his, uh, his case, but um, we are, we're just going to be very careful. But I want to emphasize again, the church has never been closed. And our work of social justice and also feeding and caring for the most vulnerable has never stopped. Neither have our prayers. And in our own homes, neither has our singing. <laughs> there you go. In, in your own four walls. Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.